This is the Unitarian Church of Lincoln's daily video update. It is Wednesday, Thursday, January 14th, 2021. I'm the Reverend Oscar Sinclair, and we're out walking on the Jim Shug Trail here in Dryden, New York. One of the books that I read for this Doctorate of Ministry program was Clayton Christensen's The Innovator's Dilemma. Now that book was written 25 years ago. It was first published in 1997, but it's been in print pretty much constantly since then. And while it's become almost canonical as an explanation for disruptors from Netflix to Tesla, it still makes for fascinating reading, especially when you start to consider what the dilemmas and opportunities Christensen lays out might mean for churches. And the essence of the dilemma that Christensen describes is this. Established institutions are very successful because they meet the needs of their current customers or their members, in the case of churches. They focus a lot of attention on perfecting what they do, building a better car or putting together a small group ministry program. And ironically, though, this focus on perfecting what makes them successful makes institutions really slow to see paradigm shifts in technology or culture. Because often, disruptive technologies that come along are just not as successful at first. So a successful company, a company focused on efficiencies and scale and doing things the best way for the best number of people, doesn't see disruptions until the disruptions are already scalable and direct competitors. So think of cars for a moment. 25 years ago, it didn't make sense to make an electric car. It's really cold, so I'm gonna have to switch hands here. 25 years ago, it didn't make sense to make an electric car. They were inefficient. There wasn't much of a market for them. They couldn't go as far as a gas powered car. They required a ton of um, investment up front to make the technology work even a little. And so an established car maker like, say, Toyota, rather than focusing on making an electric car, instead innovated, but in an iterative, iterative fashion. So Toyota came out with the Prius. It was a hybrid electric and gas powered car. And the Prius at the time was sort of the, the logical next step for efficient cars in America. It sold well, sold really well. Meanwhile, about the same time, Tesla was forming as a company. And Tesla, as an idea, said, we think there is a niche market for electric cars. We know they're not as efficient we know they're not as useful. We know that they're going to be more expensive, but there are there is a small enough group of people for whom their needs are met by an electric car or their interests are met by this novel technology that we can start to, to build out the process. So Tesla started as a niche product, building only a couple thousand cars a year, if that. 25 years later, the founder of Tesla, who was just announced this week, is now the richest person on earth. And Toyota is playing catch up to electric cars because now hybrids are not enough. Just pause for a moment to look at this lake. It's really quite something up here. So that story has some implications for churches, right? The focus on improvement that's so helpful for organizations to achieve their initial success is actually what holds organizations back from innovating because innovation initially doesn't get as good results as perfecting what you already do. So what does that mean for churches in 2021? 
we'll pick up on that tomorrow.